main part of the evening, we, we've um, had several, um, it, the, the question of councillors and future section of, uh, selection of councillors has come up several times, so we decided it was, this is an important enough topic uh, that we should um, have a discussion about it at this meeting. We've got three speakers who are going to deal with different aspects of this problem. Uh, so we have councillor Tony Lucky at the far end, um, who is councillor for Osterley and Spring Grove, extremely active councillor, who's made a big impression in the area, and that's the reason why we, we invited him to come this evening. Um, Ron Bartholomew, at the other end, who has, was a councillor for many years, is, uh, remains an active member of the Labour Party, and no doubt in, for many other things. Um, uh, Tony is going to talk about the work of the councillor, what's, in, what's involved in being a councillor, sort of daily grind of things that you have to do and perhaps what it's like participating in meetings of the, of the Labour group. Ron is going to talk about um, councils, council structures, how councils are structured, cabinet, um, government, committee, government, you, you, you may or may not be aware of these, these things, and choices which can be made uh, or can be changed. And Judith Atkinson, in the middle, um, is going to speak about the process of selection of councillors the hoops that you have to jump through um, to become a councillor. So that's how we're going to go. I think we it's Tony first, Tony, then Ron, and then Judith. Now, I, I heard what Deborah said, but I, I don't want the camera to dominate the proceedings, and I had decided that up to 10 minutes would, would be okay um, for your opening um, um, talks, and then uh, we'll, we'll open the thing to discussion after that. Does that sound okay? Yes? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Um, Tony, over, open, over to you. All right, uh, th thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm Tony Lukey, I'm Labour Councillor for Ossolin Spring Grove Board. I didn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn, I didn't vote for any of them. Um, none of them uh, tickled my fancy. I'm not a member of Momentum, so we'll get that straight. I am, as, as uh, David has described, I'm a councillor in, in Ossolin Spring Grove Board, one normally, uh, one by Conservatives, um, but managed to uh, nick one off from the top of the poll in uh, 2014. Um, I've been asked to uh, speak on how the council functions at the moment. We've got 60 councillors in 20 wards. No need to make notes, I've got some papers here. Um, we have, um, we have uh, a strong leadership model at the council, and um, uh, who, it's run by, the, uh, run by one person, the leader, elected um, immediately after the uh, the uh, council elections uh, for a term of four years, unless challenged and loses um, the confidence of 75% of the uh, of all councillors, not just uh, councillors in the uh, in, in the majority group, the Labour group. As um, and uh, the uh, at that uh, first AGM after the council uh, elections, um, the whole group elects a leader, whole group elects the, uh, the deputy leader, and the whole group elects mem eight members of the uh, cabinet. Um, there's a balance in the, uh, almost a balance in the cabinet, um, at least four of the members, four of the eight members um, must be women. There are five area forums across the borough in Hounslow, uh, from Chiswick through to uh, Bedfont, Hamworth and Feltham, um, and I, made up by councillors from the wards and they deal with local issues um, within, within those areas. We have regulatory committees, we've got planning, we've got licensing. Um, these, are, um, these are there by, 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 by statute. Um, they're not whipped. Other meetings are whipped, so council meetings are whipped. We have 10 of those a year. Um, we, we make the decisions in, in, in the group. We have a variety of appeals panels, school transport appeals, um, licensing appeals. Uh, but we also have an overview and scrutiny committee where the leadership is not involved, the leadership and cabinet is not involved in selecting, but they're there to scrutinise um, cabinet decisions. Um, and they might be cabinet decisions made by the cabinet as a whole, which meets about 10 times a year, or they might be individual member, um, cabinet member decisions. There's one uh, that's just been published a couple of days ago about the future of the Watermans and the development of the, uh, the police station there on uh, Half Acre. Uh, if anyone's interested, look at the council website. Um, leader allocates cabinet portfolios. We've just had our annual general meeting. Uh, 
finished at quarter to one last night or this morning, um, where um, where where, uh, where where people um, kind of jostled for position in particularly you know in, in, in the in the planning in the yogi and scrutiny. We had a, had one the week before where we uh, where we elected chairs of area forums and committees. Um, Often there's a clamour at these uh, annual general meetings because um, some people are, um, want to uh, want to use their talents at the council. Um, some people feel that there's uh, that you know, it's worth going for the uh, the extra special responsibility allowance uh, that uh, a position brings. But all councillors receive a basic allowance of nine thousand two hundred seventy six pounds a year. I've got I've got a, that's a, again that's available on the website. Let, let's just. Leave all that, that's easy to find out from the website if you like, but um, what's it entail being a councillor? Uh, what, what does it involve on a day-to-day -day basis? People ask me, you know, oh, you know how, how many hours you work? Well, I, I tend to say it's 24-7. Um, it can be 24-7. You sometimes get telephone calls at 11 o'clock at night, you get them on Sunday nights. Um, if people have a problem um, that they can't resolve or they don't know how to resolve immediately. Um, but what it, what, it, what it involves on a day-to-day -day basis, preparing for and attending council and uh, labour group meetings. Um, they tend to take place at uh, Hounslow Civic Centre or unless they're area forums. Isles and Brentford one takes place at, uh, at, at the, church, the Free Church on, uh, on, on Half Acre there on Boston Manor Road. Uh, respond to council, uh, respond to constituents' inquiries in person, on the telephone, via email by social media. Uh, when I was, I was a councillor before in the, in, in the 1990s and uh, yeah, Judith Atkinson kindly um, brought a copy of the night, the class of 1990. Um, pass it no, no, don't pass it man. This is, my, this, is, this, is, this is my slot, you do it, you do it in yours, all right? Uh, don't, 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 um, don't, don't crowd my slot. Um, but also it's about being proactive, I think, anyway, that's the way I do it, it's about being proactive within the, uh, the community that you represent, within the ward you represent. So sometimes you notice things and you report them. The easiest way to do it, to report them, is, um, you know, I tend to, I've, I've been turned on to Twitter lately, um, so you take a photograph, you tweet it to Hounslow Council, please get rid of this flight tip. Sometimes, and it's been good, you know, after many years of uh, trying to get network rail down to uh, sort the bridge out, uh, the two bridges out uh, by Isworth Station, um, normal letters, normal emails, normal using council officers' services to um, to achieve that, um, very slow. Um, but when you um, tweet at network rail, embarrass them about their um, the graffiti, the long-term graffiti on the uh, on the bridges there, the antisocial behaviour, and drinking in the car park. You get a you, you get a, you get a call, you get an email. The uh, you know within a couple of days, and you know, as a result of that, you know, since rail privatisation, um, twenty odd years, um, it's the first time 20, 20 odd, 24 years this year. Um, we um, we uh, we got someone down from a couple of people from Network Rail, and we're working harder on the station. Uh, we liaise with um, we, 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 li we liaise with local public services. Problems down at Thornbury Park. I don't know if you know it, but that's off London Road. Um, badgering of the police, uh, where we meet them at various uh, various forums. I met the uh, borough commander at um, at the Spring Grove Residents Association. Again, you work with residents associations. You go to their meetings. But I met at the residents association um, and talked about it. He goes, oh, well, why don't we? You know, there's drug dealing problems there. There's other antisocial behaviour there. So well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we exercise our police dogs on Thornbury Park? Um, that that will uh, a, we can they can sniff out drugs. B that will uh, show we've got a presence. Whatever you feel about the police, it's I think it's quite uh, it was quite an innovative uh, solution for our uh, for our um, our problems there. Other things have done uh, was arrange ward meetings. Fortunately, West Thames College is in my ward. They're a very friendly organisation. They let us use the, uh, the premises uh, free of charge, and we've had some um, we've had some good events down there. Some good speakers down there. Um, issues that, uh, that concern local residents. Um, but um, mainly, it's it's um, it's it's kind of day it's kind of day to day um, repetitive stuff, if you like. But 
from that, you, you kind of learn strategies of how to deal with longer term problems. Um, Thornbury Park is a good example of where it has been neglected. It was kind of run down for a while with perhaps... Uh, a long while. For a long while. But, um, but by, uh, by, by, promoting, um, by, by, by promoting some kind of community involvement in that, We've, uh, we've, we've managed now to, uh, last, in March, we, uh, we, we constituted a friends group. We've had foliage cut back, we've had deep clean, we've uh, bid for money. Um, we've got a new outdoor gym in there, for example. So, you know, we've, we've had rough sleepers removed, but removed in a, in a kind way, brought, brought um, Brought uh, mongos down, some mongos down to uh, to work with these folk um, to um, to guide them in a different direction. Uh, because yes, it's important to uh, you've got to have somewhere to sleep, but at the same time, when people are using a public uh, public space, uh, they do need to feel safe as well. Uh, we remove graffiti through through that that, that kind of pressure. Um, I've got a website, um, kindly set up by. Um, for me, for by, by David Pavitt, um, I, I've, I've learned how to maintain that. Got Twitter, got blooming Facebook page. Um, where my Twitter is, it, it, it's tied to. The most important thing, though, I think, of being a councillor and the work you, that you do as a councillor is promoting the Labour Party. I don't know how many of you are members of the Labour Party. I think most of you are members of the Labour Party. But it is about promoting the Labour Party and showing that by having Labour representation in a traditional Conservative ward, they, uh, people turn. And David will, yeah, David will agree some of the work that I've done with died in the wall Conservatives. Um, I even had one say, yeah, I'm <laughs> I voted, he fell on Wood Lane in a, in a, in a more than £2 million house. I voted, uh, he said, I'm going to vote Labour this time round for the GLA. Uh, he said, and when he did vote, he said, I voted Labour all the way, I voted for Sadi, <coughs> I voted for the party, and I voted for Martin Welton, our candidate. And I think that's kind of, I'm not, I'm not giving it large, but I think that's kind of testament, not just the work I've done, and I don't know how many of you were out, and how many of you do go out uh, on, behalf of the, uh, on, on behalf of the Labour Party at campaigns, but we didn't win Austin in Spring Grove Ward just by, uh, you know, j just by putting candidates up. We won Austin in Spring Grove Ward in, two, in 2014 with three good candidates. We would have got all three for uh, 92 votes. We would have got all three if um, for a couple of hours we had one, per one, more, one more person out knocking on doors. And that's what, you know, I, I would like to see whatever your, uh, you know, wherever, whatever your uh, shade in the Labour Party, um, I, you know, I'd like to see everybody working towards it, no matter who the candidate is, uh, no matter um, no, no matter what who the prevailing you know, who the leader is, um, go out there and work it. And by working it, we, we we do win and we can win. If I look at the results, I didn't bring them with me. But if you look at the results, LondonElect.org, um, you will see how dominant Labour was in Hounslow in all three votes. Um, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. Apart from, you know, but even in Chiswick, we got some. Uh, we, we got a good, good support for uh, for, for Labour. But um, you know, we, we, we dominated because we've got a good organisation on the ground. I've gone on a bit. Yeah, um, I was about to ask you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I've gone on a bit because I, I do do that. Um, but uh, what being one thing I'm, I'm most concerned about is all councillors yeah, promote the Labour Party, but also maintain the moral compass. Um, some people, some people, I won't name, I won't say, I don't know how many, maybe none perhaps, but some people um, don't always go in, you know, become councillors or stand for councillors for these, uh, for, for these reasons I, I, I may have suggested. Um, they have their other motives, but my motive, and I think if, um, if you're as on, I'm not, you know, not singling anyone out, if, you, if, if, if this, this hue of the Labour Party is honourable about these things, honourable about these things, um, you would probably do the same and work hard along with, your, uh, along with your other interests. My final point here, and I'll give you a copy of this, my final point here is obeying the whip. No point being in the Labour Party, in the Labour group, uh, if you're going to break the whip. You argue within group, you argue, you argue hard in group um, to get what uh, you think is right, but 
There's no point breaking it because you'll be out. People will find ways and reasons for excluding you from that. There's no, no point being out. This is not popular in the 1920s. This is not Liverpool in the 1980s. Unfortunately, it's austerity uh, Britain under the Tories. And the only way you get rid of them is by continuing to work hard, knock on doors, campaign and convince. I hope that's useful. Happy to talk later on. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Tony. Um, I'd just like to add one thing, one thing that uh, perhaps you've forgotten, which is that not only is it a matter of attending all these meetings, helping people with their problems, but one of the important things that um, Tony has done is to act as a catalyst for residents or organisations. So when there's an issue, bring people together, have a meeting, encourage them to do something about things themselves. And you know, that has led to some quite important activities.